Well, the funeral with Queen Elizabeth lying in state at Westminster Hall is still in progress. This is now Saturday night going into Sunday morning and I've been given some information that Lilibet and Archie are in Britain at Frogmore with Harry and Meghan. I think that's right for them to do that because this has turned into an extended stay and it's very hard for mothers to stay away from their children for such a long period of time. So I think it's great that Archie and Lilibet are in Britain and as to what they'll be doing, if anything related to the Queen's passing, her funeral, any activities. Because I've heard that <coughs> Harry and Meghan have been disinvited to a reception, which I think would probably be the most likely place for the kids to come meet others and spend some time while the parents are chatting and drinking, that means they won't be there. So there'll have to be other events because Charles may not realize that lots of people around the world want to have a chance to say hello to Megan and Harry and to see their children and also to give their warm regards and pass on their deep sympathy for Harry losing his grandmother and the kids losing their great-grandmother. So I don't know what opportunities are going to be afforded for the family of Harry and Meghan to meet with people so that they can also get condolences and sympathy from those who will be attending a reception and other functions which they are now calling corporate and will only be for corporate employees. A lot of these times these corporate events don't exclude everybody and you can always have special guests such that they are not a corporate employee, but they are invited because of their relationship to people who are in the corporation. And certainly, that would include Harry, because he also lost a family, family member. This is not just a corporate event. This is not just a meeting by the big bosses to decide money issues. This is about very close relationships that are going to be formed and are going to be renewed and expressions of grief about how people are sorry that the Queen has died and a chance to pass on great stories that people from around the world have about things they did in the past with the Queen. Funny stories, humane stories, and just things to make Elizabeth seem human after her passing. A chance to pass stories to the kids, if possible, because they're quite young. But I don't think exclusion is good, and I think that all of these people are missing the point. If Charles is going to have a reign of holding grudges and trying to continue to divide the family, 
his reign is not going to be good. Now this reign of Charles, he's not going to live very long probably because he does not appear to be in good health. But it will cost billions to change over from the reign of Queen Elizabeth to the reign of King Charles. They have to redo all the money. They have to do, redo all the stationery. They have to rename buildings. They have to rename streets. They have to rename groups. Um, just everything if you want to have the total package of going from one monarch to another. It's going to cost huge amounts of money. And if the reign is going to be one of continuing divisiveness, the citizens need to decide if it's going to be worth all that money for the short reign that King Charles is going to have. It'll be interesting. If these people can't figure out how to work together in a family, they certainly can't figure out how to work and heal a country. But it'll be interesting to see what they do, and it will be interesting to see how they integrate Archie and Lilibet into the activities that are meant to memorialize their great grandmother, Queen Elizabeth II. Titles in the United States don't mean much. So calling them prince and princess is cute. But they don't mean anything in the United States. And of course, Harry is out of the royalty business if he is not in Britain. So these are things they have to decide. If they're going to remain in the United States, they're going to be out of the royalty business. And Harry seems very comfortable in the royalty business. That is how he's been raised since he was a little Nimrod, ever since the second he was born. I wonder what Harry is really like as a husband, because he never had to take care of himself. He's always had nursemaids and other personal aides around him for his every whim. And how has he adapted to being an American husband where none of this is available? I would be interested in hearing that story and maybe someday we will get the lowdown on Harry as a husband in the United States. What skills did he have to be taught? And how is he liking doing those new skills? Well, I want you to like and subscribe. And I will do another video in a little while. Bye.